Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So what is this work about? You know, what is Magnetic Mind about? What are we doing here? It's a question that I'd like you to think about and consider what is what is this about there's a very obvious answer and the the answer is we're here to learn how to be powerful conscious creators who agrees with that to become powerful to find our power with our super conscious and to create a life we love but, you know, that, that's what we're here to do, because we know that if we understand how to be powerful creators, you know, then, then we're the ones back in control. The truth of what I notice in Western society is most people are a victim of their circumstances, history and conditioning. They're a victim of it. They don't like to say that, but it's true. They're a victim of it and, and they're not able to create what they want because of this or because of that or because of this belief structure or their upbringing. And it's just, it's just true, even to the point that those of us who go searching that are seekers go and find information, which even looks like good information, but a lot of times can be misinformation and can create identities and structures that we're not good enough or that we need to fix ourselves, or that we would have at the crazy one about how you have to go and heal your past and even past lives in order to be successful. So even us seekers, we still get put into this place where we're now a victim of that belief. We don't even know it. We don't even know that we're actually a victim of that. Uh, we are, we, we think, no, no, I'm, you know, I'm here, I'm, be, I'm working on myself but we're actually unconsciously stuck because of it, like a golden cage, not allowing us to open it and fly. And so th that's just the truth. We're, we're stuck. And, and I see it in a lot of people's visions and choices. Okay. So do me a favor. What is it that you really, really, really want to avoid in life? Like, what, what would you want to avoid? And just as an exercise for the group, as a group, can we just write down what are the things you would like to avoid? What is it that you would prefer doesn't happen? And so, so let's start writing it out. Yeah, poverty, being lonely, homeless. Thank you. Let's write out what would you like to avoid? Conflict. Yeah, no money. Yeah. What do you want to avoid happening in your life? Divorce. Yeah, you want to avoid, avoid that. Being by myself. Yeah, being lonely, avoiding. It's interesting to me because when I think about the working class society, which I think most of us got a, uh, a ticket to when we came into this world, right? Most of us got a ticket into working class society. Well, I did. And these are some of the things I learned in the working class society. I first learned that no one really enjoys what they do. I learned that you got to go and do something you don't like, and that's part of life. It's part of it. And we call this thing work. We call this the struggle. You know, you got to go do that. And what I learned from my family and people around me is they don't really want to do that. They'd much prefer to be somewhere else. And that somewhere else was on vacation. It was at the beach. They'd much prefer to be playing sport and getting paid to play sport or getting paid to play music than what they got to do every day. And very soon, you know, I learned to be the same. I wanted to be out playing with my friends. But no, I had to be in class on a hot day 
writing and doing things I didn't want to do, but I was told this is the way it is. This is the way it is. And I learned very early that I'm not allowed to have what I want because there's rules. There's a way you have to be. However, if you're good enough and work hard enough, you can get out of this. You can escape and you can have freedom. Am I the only one that got this or is this, is this true? Give me a T or a true if you also experience this. What I was, uh, what I was told was you don't create, you solve problems. You don't go for what you love. You make sure you've got everything safe. You think about the future. See, you value safety. You value working for it. You value not getting things wrong. In fact, every couple of months, you're going to get tested. And you're good if you get things right. And you're bad if you get things wrong. See, I think it's interesting what we code up as good and bad as a child. This is my question for you today. What did you have to do to be good? As a child, what was good? What were some of the things you had to do that made you, you were good? What are the good things you had to do? What did you have to be? What did you have to do? How did you have to act? And I think that's an interesting thing. Type it down. What, did you, what, what was being good in you, for you and your family? What was being good? And not just what you had to do, but what did your parents do that was good? I'll tell you mine. I'll tell you what was good. What was good is passing all of your tests. What, is, what was good is being a good child around family, being quiet. Here's what was good. It was good to achieve in sport, bad to lose. What was good was to work hard. That's what was good. And so I realized that I ended up with this concept of good, but then also bad. So that's my next question. For you, what was bad? As a child, what was bad? What was not allowed? What was bad? See, I tell you what was the worst thing for me growing up, being lazy. I could be anything but lazy. Lazy was the worst thing in my family. That's bad. Very bad. What's bad? Not doing the chores. That's bad. Not playing your role. Bad. Yeah. Lying. Bad. Being dishonest. Bad. Failing. Bad. Stealing. That's bad. Yeah, that's bad. Letting other people down was bad. I remember my dad uh, telling me about how stupid my uncle was because he lost $50,000 of my grandparents' money in a business venture. My dad laughed how bad he was. Taking risks, it's bad. See, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? There's this sense of, of good and bad. There's this, there's this coding. And I want you just to think about all the things that you wrote down that you wanted to avoid. And then what you've just written down is good and bad. Let me ask you, how closely are those related to your goals in life? How, how much do they relate to what it is that you've thought you needed to do with life? Here's what's good. Here's what's bad. Here's what I want to avoid. You think about those three different lists. Isn't it interesting that what results is, is, is how you go for things, what you are after? Isn't that interesting? Give me a yes if that's interesting to you, or is it just me that that's interesting to? Very interesting, yeah. Look at all those yeses coming in. Very interesting, but it's not true, is it? It's not true. You go to Fiji, you're going to see people living with a different rule structure. You go to Africa, different rule structure. It's just this weird rule structure that we have. And so I think it's fascinating. I think it's interesting, but I also know that it's not true. 
It's not a, it's not true. It's just, it's a reality. See, what I saw around me was an idea that you don't love your day. You don't love what you do. You're going to live for this weekend and you're going to live for holidays. Between that, you just got to put in the work. You got to go to the gym to have a good body. You got to go to work to get enough money to eat. You got to have this to do this. To do, it's all these things. It's all just making sure that you avoided pain. Who's feeling this? Who's, who's hearing me right now? Who's hearing me right now? See, see, one of the biggest things is that the working class that I grew up in, and maybe you did as well, the one thing they all have in common is they deny the present moment. They deny the present day. They deny having it now. There's always this future thing you've got to get to. You've got to pass the next grade. You've got another test to get to. You've got to get a promotion. If you just had more money, better car, lost a better weight. If you just had, if you just had, if you just had, then life will be better. How many different ways have we been programmed that if we just had a little bit more or a little bit less or a little this or a little that or a bit more, how many times in our lifetime have we been programmed that there's just something we've got to get and then everything's going to be better? And then how many times do you actually create it to realize you're exactly the same? You know, when you leave high school, then you're going to be in the real world. Nope, you're just at the bottom of a trade or university or bottom of a job. When you get up a few more things, then you go to, but then when you get a mortgage, then you'll, then when you get a then, and then, and then, and then, and then it's, it's, it's a setup that we've all created. We're all a part of it. So what's this work about becoming a powerful creator? Where do we start? Well, we start, unfortunately, as a victim to circumstances and programming that we had no, we had no responsibility of creating. True, we didn't do it. But it is now our responsibility that you found your way to this work to recode it. True. So how do we how do we do that without trying to fix it? Well, that's a really big question. Well, how do we do that without trying to fix it? See, because all the oh well, I'll fix it, I'll fix it. It all comes down to a very simple, a very simple premise that is up there with one of the most difficult things for people to get their head around. And that is nothing is going to change. You're not going to get there. Instead, you must step into a reality where you're living a day that is completely perfect, that is better than any future moment. And what I mean by this is if you had a billion dollars in the bank account, what day would you live? Not what, who would you give it all away to? What would you actually do with your time? What would you actually do? See, I know you. Your old programming might think you want to sit on a beach. You don't. They're not that exciting. You would want to do something with your life. And the question isn't what you would stop doing. It's what would you actually do? So imagine right now, what would you spend your time doing? Not what would you create? I'm not saying, I'm not asking you, oh, I'd create a foundation. I'd save the orangutans and I'd, I'd find a solution to plastic. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, what would you actually do with your time? You break up a day, you've got to sleep for between six to eight hours, most of us. So that's going to leave 16 to 18 hours. 
what do you do with that time? And I think it's a very important concept, if not the most important concept, that you have a day that you would do if you have a billion dollars, a million dollars, two dollars, but you have this same day. It's a very interesting concept and, and it's something that I really worked on myself. And I have a set day. And I think all musicians that achieve great status, they're just gonna be musicians, you see? Artists are just gonna paint. Musicians are just gonna play music, no matter what. They're not solving problems, they're just creating, that's just who they are. And I started to stumble across this when I was sitting with my mentor. He has a, he has a company that's worth over $200 million. Pretty good number. Yet every business he went to start, he always wanted to make money from it. And I couldn't understand it. And then I realized, monkeys climb trees. Birds fly, fish swim, you know. Michael Jordan had to play basketball, right? He just, my mentor just, he created businesses that make money. That was him. That's what he does. That's him. Didn't matter that he had enough, you see, because he wasn't problem solving. And so I challenged myself to create a day, to create a day that, I could live, and if I was to die the next day, that's the day I would live. And I decided to call it my perfect average day. It's a day I can live every single day, and I'm so grateful to say that I live it 60 to 70% of the time. Perfect day. Perfect day. I'm doing it right now. My perfect day. My perfect day is... It doesn't matter that I live in a bigger house than I used to, or that I might live in an even bigger house. Doesn't matter the type of cars that I have. Doesn't matter how much money I have in my bank account or don't have. I live a particular day. And see, why am I so intent on this? Because it's the opposite of the matrix. It's the opposite of what we're plugged into in a working class environment where we're told you don't love your day, you do something you don't love, you sit in traffic you don't like, you do all these other things, and then in the future, it's gonna be worth it. I'll tell you the riskiest investment on the planet. The riskiest investment is that you don't love your day now, and sometime in the future, it will be worth it. Because you're spending the most valuable thing that you only get once, which is your time. So feed this back to me. Who's having a good session today? Who needed to hear this? What are you taking away so far? Give me some, give me some feedback. What's, what's landing? Thanks, Krista. Time is the most powerful gift. What's landing for you? That's right. The working class mentality ends up sending you to early grave. Love it. With a capital L. Thanks, Gwen. Hmm. Spending today doing what I don't like doing. I'm not sure about that question, Camille. You have to give it to me in a different way. Yeah. So here's the key. The day that I would live every single day is the one that I'm living right now. I wake up, I have coffee, I make coffee for Harriet. I do my meditation. We do our choices every single day. I run. I do my exercise, I have a shower, and then I plan what I'm going to cover for the rest of the day. Straight after that, I'm producing content. It goes out on my YouTube, it goes out to people. I then lead my team, and I spend the rest of my day impacting people. Play tennis, spend an evening, have a great meal with my family. That's my day. That's my day. I live it every day. Every day. If I only had $1,000 a week income, I'd live that day. 
If I have a billion dollars a week income, I'm going to live that day. It's not going to change. That's my day. Just, just for a second, just feel into how good it feels to hear someone say, I'm living the dream. I'm living my day. And it didn't require all this other stuff because I've got my day. Right on, Phyllis. I've got my day. And you can have your day. You can have the exact perfect one you, you have. Who agrees with that, by the way? You can have it. And so I started off today. Who agrees with that? Give me a yes if that, if that lands with you. You go, yes, I can have it, but, and that's all the resistance. That's all the resistance. That's all created resistance that you've put other things to be more important. When you get into a day that is 100% better than your future you're in the wizard's gate so here's the question do you believe that your current day is better than a future day that your current reality is better than your future a lot of you know you don't believe that a lot of you a lot of us including myself will set ourselves in these unworkable structures based on past programming and conditioning that says no in the future it's going to be better in the future i'll have more money i'll have a better job i'll have an audience i'm speaking to i'll have a best-selling book i'll live in a better house i'll have a better relationship it will be better chris what the heck are you talking about? It won't. It won't be better. It won't. It won't. Because you have practiced and conditioned yourself to the future is always better so even if you create those things you won't experience it as better you'll arrive at it and you'll still just be you wherever you go there you are if you're not able to feel abundance when you have an, the ability to have food in your belly roof over your head access to an amazing internet, running water, a fridge and a freezer. I mean, just those, those small things, just to be able to on a hot day, it was hot today in Australia, by the way, it was hot. If you're in Queensland, you know it was hot today. Just the ability to have something cold on a hot day, unheard of 120 years ago. Think about that. Yet we're still in the conditioning that there's a future that will be better than now. See, well, when I have a relationship, Chris, then I'll feel, then I'll, I'll feel love. No, because a person who doesn't love themselves will can't feel love because if you can't give it to you, no one else can give it to you. How dare they? You know, but Chris, you don't get it. I've got too much weight on my body, man. I don't, I don't like how I look. Well, guess what? You'll get to the body you want and you still won't like it because you conditioned yourself to it. It's the trap. It's the trap. Just let me know how many of you have experienced this before. You've gone, yes, when I get there, it's going to be different. Then you got the new house and then all of a sudden it was the same. Yes, when I get the new relationship and it was good for a bit, but then it's the same. It's a trap, right, Martin? Just, just, just let me know if you guys have felt this. Feed this back to me. I want to make sure that I'm not just the only crazy one that's seen this. Until you are happy now, you are stuck in this cycle. Until now is better than the future, you're stuck in this cycle. And you're owned by it, by the way. It owns you. It owns you. Anything you resist owns you. 
It owns you because it's controlling your happiness. Controls your happiness. So what's the antidote? The antidote's called the wizard's gate. The wizard's gate is when you're in no resistance and no desire. See, desire is usually just a new way of saying, I don't want something to happen. See, I desire that, which is really saying, I just don't want that. It's not until you can get to the wizard's gate where you're completely satisfied with everything you have now and want more. It's not until you can get to this wizard's gate moment that you can actually just create and have everything fast. You know, Abraham Hicks has, has called this being in the vortex, being in the now being here, I call it the wizard's gate. It's when you don't run away from things. It's when you find a way to say, I actually want them. I actually want that. And it's the basis. It's the basis of becoming a powerful creator. It's what Viktor Frankl was able to do when he was, if you've read his book, Man's Search of Meaning, Search for Meaning, he was able to find freedom find in a, in a prison of war camp. In the Second World War, he was able to find freedom. Nelson Mandela was able to have more freedom and even counsel his captors because he was able to find more joy, more happiness in the now. He got into the wizard's gate and then was able to create when he stepped through. So let me ask you, are you willing to, to have the courage to face, to face your programming and feel the fear of letting go of, I can't fail, I can't be broke, I can't have this, I can't, all these things you want to avoid. Are you willing to recode your resistance to them so that you could be like, oh, I'm broke and still be happy? Oh, that's cool. I'm loving being single. I'm loving being broke. Wow. How cool is that? I have to rely on the support of someone else. Oh, wow. Are you willing to do that? Or are you going to hold on to these old programs that just anchor you and own you in so many ways? Um, Man's Search for Meaning. Man's Search for Meaning was the book, Krista. It's by Viktor Frankl. It's a good little book. Good little book. That's it. Thank you. Hey, Krista, you're actually only typing into me. See how it says all panelists? Yeah. You need to change it if you want others to see it. Cool. So who's, who's up for this? You know, really just being and stepping into this and going, you know what? This makes a lot of sense. I resist failure. I resist being broke. I resist this. I resist that. Why? There's no way to fail as a human being. Why do I resist that? Where's it come from? And what good does resisting it actually do? What does resisting it actually do? Yeah, right on, brother. Thanks, man. Who else is this big for? Type in a big if this is big for you today. Let me know, because this was huge for me. If you resist something, you give it energy. I want you to think about like a pendulum. You push it, it goes away, it comes back. You push it, goes away, it comes back. Away, it comes back. What happens when you just hold it and you swing with it? Say, oh, I love you, failure. I love you being divorced. I love you being broke. Mm. There's no energy. Oh, that wasn't, that was all right. I love it. That was great. Ah, mm. oh, that was so nice. Oh, I feel so good. I want to keep it. I like this because I've just, I've just found that I'm, I'm more powerful than my circumstances. Ah, oh, I'm so happy about this. I'm more powerful than my conditioning. I'm more powerful than 
Um, I, I can still feel happy with judgment from others. Ah, oh, what a relief. Now with all this extra energy, wow, now I'm here. Whew, what would I love to create? With, well, I'm not resisting anything. I'm happy with this. I've got it. Mm, I'm here. So good. I'm a powerful creator. So now what would I like to create? Oh, I think I'll have millions. Okay, boom, let's go. But just going for it. All focus on what I want. I'm not worried about resisting it. I've already accepted that it's fine. This is one of the biggest gifts I ever got. Biggest gifts I ever got. I resisted failure so much. And then when it happened, it was so good. So good. What you resist doesn't just persist. What you resist owns you. That's right. You're owned by your fear of failure. You're owned by your fear of broke. That's what owns you. It's your captor. It's got you, it's got you caged in a golden cage of sparkly desires. But it owns you. It's got all the power. And it's time to take your power back. Rage Against the Machine said it well. <laughs>